Hi, I'm Nicola from Woodlands TV and today I'm filming in glorious Essex Woodland, which is a stone's throw away from Colchester, where some of the UK's bloodiest battles took place against the Romans centuries ago. But it's a bloodthirsty battle of a different kind that I'm trying to capture today. I'm on the lookout for the Great Crested Newt, a beautiful and much loved protected species of newt here in UK Woodland. Now I've heard that they are fiercely hunted by the grass snake who are about to emerge after months of hibernation. So I bet they're pretty hungry. I'm off to meet a local expert. So let's take a closer look. Great crested newts are the largest newt in the UK and they are Britain's most strictly protected amphibian. It is illegal to kill, capture, injure or disturb them. So we have special permission today and I've met up with Adam Nixon from Essex Wildlife Trust a local expert to show me some of these wonderful amphibians and to take a careful but closer look. Hi Adam. Hi, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, great crested newts. Yes. Tell us, why are they so fiercely protected? So, there's been a huge habitat loss for the great crested newt. About 80% of, uh, of our ponds have been lost in the UK and that's led to a 50% decline in, uh, in newt population. 50%? That's a massive decline. Yeah, it's huge. They're, we've lost a lot of newts. So what's that number down from then? So they thought there was about a million newts or so and now they think it's around 400,000 so... Uh, and and what kind loss. of things are, are, are affecting the newts? Um, so things like pond loss, habitat loss, so they really like uh, open areas and lots of ponds have been neglected. Um, things like foliage and trees have grown over so they've, they've ended up abandoning those ponds. And then you've got things like pollution sort of you know, runoff from cars and runoff from agriculture that's basically just killed off all the ponds and then all of their habitat is gone. That's really, really sad. Yeah. And what about things like climate change? Because we always hear that, you know, the amphibians, the frogs, the newts, they're the first ones to be affected by climate change. Do you think that's a big factor as well, Adam? Uh, I think as it warms up during the winter that some of them will come out earlier and so they will have a really hot spell in maybe February where the newts will come out and then it drops cold again and that's really going to affect sort of their natural processes and their breeding behaviour. And because obviously they're amphibians, they spend, do they spend all their time in water and a bit on land? What do they do? So it's sort of a misconception really that newts spend all of their time in the water. Yeah. They actually don't really, they only come into the water to breed. The rest of the time they're out of the water. Some will travel up to half a kilometre away from the pond to, to hibernate over the winter. So are we in the midst of breeding season now then? Is that what they've come here to do? Yeah, absolutely. So March to sort of early June, late May is their breeding season. So we're in the prime time to see them there. Mating season typically occurs from March to June, with the males arriving at the breeding ponds before the females. Female newts lay between 200 and 400 eggs individually, often wrapping them in the leaves of submerged pond plants. This helps to protect the eggs from predators. Like many amphibians, great crested newts often return to the same ponds each year for breeding, demonstrating a strong site fidelity. Okay, well I'm really keen to see one. Is this the best pond? Because there's a few around. So this pond has just undergone some restoration, so we're hoping newts come back to it. We don't think there's any in here, but I know one that's a bit better just along the way. Well, will you take me there? Yes. Come on, let's go. <laughs> With its prominent wavy crest, the great crested newt, also known as the warty newt, looks like a mini dinosaur. They can live for up to 15 years in the wild and can grow up to 17 centimetres long. Well, Adam, you've brought me to a rather stagnant looking pond. Are we going to find newts in here? Yeah, so that's the thing with newts. When this might look stagnant to us, this is sort of their perfect habitat. There's plenty of sort of greenery in there. When we look around the outside of the pond, there's plenty of places for them to hide. There's loads of insects sort of swimming around in there, so it's the ideal place for them, really. Okay, now I've heard that they are hunted by grass snakes. Is that true or is there something else? Yeah, so newts sort of sit in the middle of the food chain. Um, above them are things like grass snakes. Birds are known to have them. Foxes and hedgehogs have even been found to eat them. Foxes? Yeah, it's, uh, it's bizarre, but they, they do have them. And then sort of below them, they keep the insects in the water in check. So they're really sort of sat in the middle and a really important sort of uh, food web. Uh, yeah. So they're kind of up against it then? They are, yeah, for sure. I mean, they're, they're losing the habitat, everything's trying to eat them, but uh, they're getting by. <laughs> <laughs> so how important then are newts of, of all kinds, great crested included, to the ecosystem as a whole, would you say? Well, like I said, they sort of play a really vital part in connecting up the food chain. Um, 
these ponds are disappearing and they're disappearing fast and the little ones we do have you don't want them to become overrun with things like insects and things stuff like that so if the newt is in there it's sort of a really good balancer um, it's also a really good indicator of how good the water quality is in an area so if like this whilst it might not look like much to us the fact that newts are in there show that this water is really good quality and you need that in forests uh, you know good quality water for drinking and, and things to hunting and stuff like that well let's see if we can find any um... I'm not sure what I'm looking for, apart from that nice crest. Can you see any there? Uh, I think I can see one, a small one, just on the, uh, the bottom there. Oh, that thing that looks like a leaf. <laughs> yes, the thing that looks like a leaf, yeah. It's uh, very small. Oh, it is. It's moving quite slowly, though. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's just sat oh. at the bottom. I can't quite tell what species it is uh, from here and how small it is. So we know that newts are in here? Yes, 100%. Oh, they're so fascinating. All right, well, Adam, I'm going to leave you to it. It's been great to meet you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Well, we didn't witness any battles between newts and grass snakes today, but it's good to see newts doing well in my local woodland. And it sounds to me like they have more than just grass snakes to worry about. Well, there you have it. One of the UK's most protected species of amphibian right here in Essex woodland. Now, sometimes caring for the environment is best done at a distance. So remember, if you do find great crested newts in UK woodland, it's best to admire them from afar or join a local conservation group to take a closer look. Thanks for watching.